Hello and welcome back Squirrel Nation. I hope you're all having an outstanding day. I had an amazing game on the stream that I wanted to show you. It was a totally troll game. Um, the stream was kept pestering me to try Glacier Hunters, which I told them would fail repeatedly. Um, but they finally just bugged me enough that I tried it. Unfortunately, the audio is corrupted when I export it from Twitch to YouTube. So instead, I have an amazingly fun game that I'm going to show you. I, it's just beautiful. Anyways, hope you all enjoy. Let's dive in. Okay, here we go. Starting off with a Skybreaker. Uh, checking out the lobby, a lot of people start with Goblins, so we can keep that in mind moving forward. Um, the starts I like are probably Warriors or Goblins. Uh, if a lot of the lobby is going goblins, a Taboo Witcher is nice because it can counter uh, units like goblins that require the mana to ultimate. So that's also something keeping in mind. And anyways, yeah. Okay, so with the Hell Knight, grab that. Um, Abyssal Guard too, maybe. But probably here you grab the Hell Knight. The reason being is you generally want to mix in Demon into your early game comps just because they're really strong individual units. So the, the Abyssal Guard is also a strong individual unit, just not quite as strong as a Hell Knight. But if, let's say I would have picked up a, uh, a Warrior in round one, then I probably would have grabbed the Abyssal Guard just to have the three Warrior synergy available to me. But, and yep. So lots of goblins like we saw, uh, somebody starting with the God of War in the Desperate Doctor, and then we have a two-star Garrus. So here, I could pick up the three goblins, but they're kind of the weaker ones, so the pair and the Soul Breaker make sense. Really, if you're aiming for an early start with a um, goblins, you really want to get a Ripper, or you want to get a two-star of one of your other goblins. Um, at this point... I guess, actually, honestly, there, if I'm reviewing this play, I probably would have preferred to put the uh, mana item onto my Soul Breaker because it's guaranteed that I'm not going to keep a Soul Breaker in my comp. Or or I could also put it on a, a Sky Breaker because that same thing. The Goblins you're not going to keep, so they're really good units to front load, and bam, we hit the mother load of items. So hitting that many mana crystals and that many armor um, items opens up a lot of different paths for you. So I could go into warrior comps, I could go into mage comps, um, I could basically just go anything. I can go with a siren. Anytime you get that many mana crystals for me kind of triggers my siren, the call of the siren. So here, like I said, we could we could have went with the three goblins, um, but the fact that I had so many mana crystals I think is why I decided to go here. But I could honestly justify taking out the hell knight and putting in soul breaker too. Soul breaker is not that great at one star, but it would give me the goblin synergy, which is super strong. And see, actually, I'm losing exactly to a three goblin. But notice they have a two star soul breaker. So, uh, two star soul breaker really matters, I would say. But, eh, that, that, that one's kind of here nor there. Okay, just peeking at synergies. Okay, another option here would be grab the God of War. God of War goes really well with the. Um, two goblins, because that way they just ultimate, plus I have a ton of mana items. So the fact that I have the mana items, and the fact that I have the goblins would justify the god of war. But it looks like I want to open up a night route. Um, so we do put the three goblins on the board, so so that's good too. But I, I think I should pick up the god of war here, because it, it opens up some early game uh, nice synergies. But we can see I'm setting my board up. I try to always have two builds that we could go towards. Um, so right now it looks like we're setting up for warriors and we are setting up for some sort of feather hunters type of route and even knights. So in, in this case, we actually have three builds that we're set up for. So that goblin synergy helps. We get a win and we should scout and see if we can do better, if we should level this round. Probably not because of the fact that I, ha I haven't hit any two stars um, and that will definitely hold me back. But okay, yeah. So now you can clearly see that I'm definitely, the, the routes opening to me are definitely towards night, definitely towards warriors. Um, goblins are just kind of something that we can sit on for a while. Uh, and I, I like selling the archer there to just get the pair of skybreakers. 
Uh, so now we have two pair. We have the Hell Knight and we have the Skybreaker, and we do go to we do spend the gold at level. I think that's also a good call because I do have a really strong team. Um, three goblins plus two Hell Knights is a pretty pretty nice start unless I face somebody with a crazy amount of two stars, but I think we saw all the teams only have one two star, so uh, that's pretty good. So that is good. And yeah, you can see this team has the two stars, so it has the you know quality advantage, but my synergies are better, so I win. So nice. Good call. And we can see the I lost from the other person's point of view, which is D-U-E, and that person is in, what, sixth place. So yeah, we're, we're, we're checking on the person who beat us, and they are also a goblin synergy, so they have the three goblins. Uh, nice, we're hitting Hell Knight, but we also hit a Tusker, and we get a Reaper, uh, or Ripper, sorry. So that is also good, and yeah, just beef up our quality here. Nice. I don't think there's much to argue with there. Um, basically, from here, my objective should be to win streak, and if I can't streak, then I need to clear my bench. Have it, like, I'm okay, I've started to be more okay holding a large bench if I'm win streaking because it gives you flexibility to continue your win streak, but once you start to lose, um, I highly recommend you decide what build you're going to go towards and clear out your bench as much as possible. And, like, by the bench size, what I mean is if you count how much gold is on my bench right now, I think it's probably around 10, let's see, 2, 6, uh, 8, 9, so I have 9 gold on my bench right now. So that, that's what I mean um, by keeping a heavy bench. And if we look at the economies in the game, nobody's above do double digits, so I'm okay. I'm, I'm matching everybody else's economy. Um, my bench opens up a lot of routes. Um, we can still go towards warriors. We could still go towards knights. And I have goblin carries that will, will probably continue to carry me reasonably through the game. We're checking everybody. We have warrior teams um, and we have goblin teams in the early game. So there we go, we hit another two-star warrior, so that's nice, and another Tusker. So when I hit certain key one costs, and, I, and, and they're, they're likely to go towards three stars, I, I do start to bias myself towards those builds. So Tusker is one of those one costs that you actually have multiple late-game builds that he goes very well into, and those are generally six warrior, I shouldn't say generally, those are six warrior teams. Tusker is vital in the two different routes that you could take six warriors because um be, with tusker and werewolf you will always run those in six warrior or you almost always will because it, it introduces the two beast synergy and then from there you can either add two more beasts to go four beast or you can add two marine to go uh anti mages so anyways, we're already really close to um, multiple two-star Tuskers in the early game, so Warriors are, are maybe something that are starting to look a little bit better than Knights, and then you see that I do clear out the Knights. So I think, I think that's the justification. Hitting the two-star Warchief and getting uh, two Tuskers is a kind, of, kind of the push to set me in the direction of going for a Warrior opening. And there we go, we hit the Swordsman, so that's really good. And then we also get the Poison Worm, so that's really good. Um, something we want to think about here is probably starting to phase out our Goblins. Um, level 6 is when Goblins, if you haven't gotten to 2 star, they, they can definitely start being replaced. So that is exactly what we are doing. So nice, that's perfect, beautiful. I am very happy with my play so far. Um, I need to buy that and get the mana item on my Worm and on my Wind Ranger. Nice, good. So, <clears throat> happy with that. I think I dropped the armor a little bit slow, so I don't think it counts for this round. Remember, for an item to work, it has to be on the hero before the round starts, so just keep that in mind. Um, dragon. So, if we're, if we're opening strong with warriors, then another thing is you can go for uh, warrior mages or, like, warrior dragon mages. Uh, I've, I've showed that build quite a bit on the channel, so that is basically what the path I'm opening. And I think... Yeah, that, that's just because we're getting a lot of quality with the Warriors in our team right now. So let's scout. There's, I see, what, two, I think I saw three other Beast teams right there, and we saw some Hunters. So uh, Warriors and Mages, or s some sort of magic, is, is looking good. Just changing our formation. Um, and, oh, I think I'm deciding, yeah, Venomancer or Shadow Devil. That makes sense. Uh, oh yeah, and there I'm going to take the Venomancer because I already have the 
two star hell knight for my demon so i already have one demon in my comp so that is likely the logic and a mana crystal on your swordsman is really really nice uh swordsman is a very good um early game damage carry and if you can get him to three stars he's crazy good late game but i mean obviously you can't count on getting him to three star but it, it is something really nice okay so here we go um just some notes i i kind of want to make i feel like a lot of the content creators are starting to push glacier knights um glacier builds and I think that's good. Glacier is a good composition, but just some food for thought I want to give all of you is do you really think that Warriors have got that weak to where we should all be just going like two or three teams going Glacier Knights and nobody going uh, six Warriors? That, it just kind of food for thought. And I will say that um, this game is starting to take that six, the six Warrior feel, and you can see that I'm the only team running Warriors, and then there's one other who has Warrior Spirit, but you can see their bench, they're probably heading towards Warrior Marksman, right? So um, I feel like recently in the last like day or two, for some reason, I just feel like people are really being, they, they've strayed away from Six Warrior. So I'm not really sure. Six Warrior is still really good. So um, I think that's definitely in my mind in this game. But I, I think people didn't necessarily leave Six Warrior because it got too weak. I think they just started to favor other stuff like Glacier Knights. Um, so anyways, nice pirate captain. We get our poison worm. Um, by the way, I'm holding the Lord of Sand because so f f From this point on now, we're, now we're thinking comps, right? What's my end game comp, right? We're, we're, we're getting to that point in the game. So Lord of Sand can be Lord of Sand and poisonous worm are going to open up a four beast. So six warrior four beast. Okay, that that's that's what they enable so that's why I'm holding them. The source and the dragon open up mages. So something I've started to experiment with and I like doing is holding opposing synergies. So for instance, uh, what's the counter to warriors? The counter is mages. So I hold mages and vice versa. So let's say I'm being contested. That Let's say there's like two other beast warrior teams. Well, then that's really good for me because I can pivot into mages, which is a counter to beast warrior. Um, and same thing with the mages. The mages counter me, so holding those pieces uh, just kind of makes it less likely that other people are going to go to mages, and even if they do go to mages, they will not be as strong because I'm holding core pieces. So that's kind of why I'm holding the um, Shining Dragon and Source. But honestly, yeah, okay, good. I'm glad we power leveled because we have really good stuff on our bench. We have another two star in the Tusker. Um, we have a pirate captain who might even hit two star here quickly. And honestly, yes, that's what I was about to say. I would sell the Hell Knight uh, because, like I said, you want demons mixed in, but at this point, uh, just for synergy-wise, my Tusker is getting just the extra armor from the Beast Warrior, and it frees up gold for me. And if we look at the economies, because I'm win streaking, it's okay that my economy is behind, but we don't want to get too far behind. And as you can see, there's people starting to get into the 30s, high 20s and 30s, and I'm still at the low teens, so um, I think that's why I was kind of thinking of clearing up some gold there. Same thing, the Source and the Shining Dragons, to me, are things I would start considering selling pretty quickly here. Um, the main reasons for that is I have hit a lot of the Beast, and okay, the, the Werewolf guarantees I sell. I, I should absolutely sell the Shining Dragon and Source here, because now I've hit the other key component. So with Tusker, who's probably going to be three-star in this game, and a Werewolf, that should guarantee me to go into six warriors and last scout there was no team going for mages so i can sell the mages i don't need to worry about a mage getting insane and i have the perfect setup for a six warrior team at this point point. and here i think the reason i didn't switch in werewolf is because the poison worm is giving me warlock synergy and i also have a mana item on the poison worm and i don't want to sell the poison worm to get a mana item back because uh, if I can hit a Razor Claw, then I can go into six Warriors. So to me in this game, at this point, uh, the, the debate now is not between different, or it's not between different major synergies, it's between variants. Okay, so no matter what, I'm going six Warriors. So now I either go six Warriors Marine, or I go six Warriors for Beasts. And the fact that I hit the Siren really opens that up. Okay, so... 
So then the question becomes this. When do you want to go six warriors siren? And when do you want to go six warriors with four beast? Okay? And that depends on how much magic damage there is in the game. If there's a lot of magic damage in the game, then it would be much better to go for the marine synergy. And you do that by grabbing your siren. And you do that by grabbing your abyssal guard. Um, the six warrior four beast is better if you want more damage and there's not magic people in the game. So if there's not really magic teams in the game, the Six Warrior Four Beast is amazing, and it performs well against most team compositions. And if you can get a lead, if you can get early power, like I have because I have this Pirate Captain, right? I'm, I'm probably going to have a three-star Tusker. Uh, the, the Six Warrior Four Beast can be really, really strong. But so, so that's why my bench is going that way. Another thing pointing out, like we said, if I'm on a win streak, I'm happy to hold... I'm, I'm happy to keep a lot of stuff on my bench, which keeps me flexible because it keeps me more likely to win streak. So there we go. Now we hit our Abyss uh, Guard. And we can start thinking about Six Warriors because I do have Six Warriors. Um, to get the Six Warriors, I'd have to remove Venomancer, remove the Poisonous Worm, put in the Abyssal Guard, and put in the Werewolf. But do I want to do that? That kind of becomes a thing. So I'd be giving up the... Um, they're one stars for one stars, but I would be giving up Warlock Synergy. And to be quite honest, I think I probably should have made the switch because Six Warrior is probably worth giving up the Warlock Synergy in all honesty. And yeah, if the Poison Worm was two stars or my Venomancer was two stars, that would be different, but they're not. So I, I, I think I should have went Six Warrior there. Also, I could sell the Venomancer because the Venomancer is not in any of my late game end builds. So it's just gold that's kind of holdover gold. So we lose our win streak, so I would expect my play to change here. Um, but we are doing good in terms of level and in terms of gold. So round 16, we did hit 7, level 7, which is nice. Round 21, we'll be targeting um, level 8. So that will be good. Oh, that's very nice. We get our, our Werewolf. Th this should guarantee that I switch to uh, Six Warrior. So remove Venomancer, hopefully. Remove the um, poison Poisonous Worm. But it looks like I'm really hesitant to remove them. I don't know why. And I definitely and the other reason I should definitely sell Venomancer is it gets me to 50 gold. So I don't know. Okay, that's a misplay. So there we go. There, there's my first what I would consider major misplay of the game. Should have taken out the Venomancer, sold it, and put in the one-star Abyssal Guard. Yes, I lose Warlock Synergy, but I get to 50 gold, and I get to six, I can get my six Warrior uh, Synergy on the board. So, yeah. Or am I miscounting? Maybe I'm miscounting. Maybe that's why. Uh, oh, no, actually, never mind. I get, wait, no. I have Abyssal Guard... I need to see what else I have on the board. Do I have my... I have a Swordsman and a Red Axe Chief on the board, I believe. Where am I? Um, third place. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I need to put in the Swordsman, too. Yeah, so I can hit six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I should definitely do it, because I can hit the Six Warrior. But it, it is a little rougher, because I'd have to put in a one-star Swordsman and take out my two-star Tusker. But would I... Actually, no, I wouldn't. I'd just have to take out the Venomancer and the Poison Worm. Yeah, yeah. So I should, I, I should definitely go to Six Warrior. <laughs> um, but scouting around, so we have one, two Druid teams. We have two Marksman teams, I think. And we had somebody going, I think, was I saw Dragons. Um, and then we had a Glacier Knight. So um, Six Warriors perform pretty well against Glacier Knight as long as the levels are comparable, right? So if they get their three-star Light Blade and three-star Hell Knight and you don't have any... It's not going to look that way, but actually Six Warriors performs well against Glacier Knights because of the armor. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't do the smart thing and I didn't go to Six Warrior. So there we go. That round, I probably didn't need to lose if I would have just went into Six Warrior. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Fallen, Witcher... I think at this point, I know I'm going Six Warriors, so, you know, you can mix in the Fallen Witcher if my economy can be way ahead. Um, and my economy has been good this game, so it, 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 there's potential there. But I, I may just be holding it for a little bit. Nice, another Abyssal Guard and a Swordsman. I would sell the Witcher, yep, grab the Swordsman. Because if I can get those, uh, the Abyssal Guard and the Swordsman to two-star, I don't see how high I possibly don't go to Six Warrior. And man, I am really just... 
really committed to this this warlock. By the way, on this note, this is a reason um, people ask me like, hey, Chaos, what's what's some tips you could give me as XYZ rank? And honestly, my, my number one tip, number one advice to all players, no matter your rank, if you want to improve as much as possible, is review your gameplay, right? Because even me sitting here and I'm watching this, like, you can see how quickly I, I identify a misplay, right? Like, I was calling the Venomancer how many rounds ago now, right? And for some reason in this game, I still just don't see it. So, so we all... And, and my point to you all is like, we all get into games and we kind of get that laser focus on something or we get too attached to something. Um, and you just want to find those bad habits because once you identify a bad habit, it's a lot easier for you to start um, phasing it out, right? And here, oh my gosh, I'm still not going. Si wow, okay, thank you, finally. Wait, no, wrong warrior. Swordsman. Oh, see, okay. But right idea. I just put in the wrong... Hopefully I realized before the round. Uh, no, wait, what? Oh yeah, you can tell I'm confused. Because I'm like, wait, that's six, but it, it's a swordman I don't have the on the board. So, yeah, fail. <laughs> okay, but at least, at least you can tell I'm seeing that. Well, wow, that's interesting. This is, normally my mistakes, I, I catch them, I feel kind of quicker. But this game, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm really having a time of it. I'm wondering what's happening here. But anyway, so we have a Glacier Knight, a Six Assassin, a... Yeah, we do have a Mage in first place. Um, and yeah, so... Okay, that brings up another great thing. So, you know a Mage is in first place. We know what counters Six Warriors. Mage. Okay, so if Mages counter Six Warriors, and I'm going for that, and a Mage is the person in first place, then should I target Four Beast, or should I target uh, Six Warrior Marine? And then I would say, obviously, I should... T what is... Wow, I am so committed to this. Wow, I just really, really, really love that Warlock uh, synergy. And again, I'm going to be below gold. Okay, but anyways, I guess I'm waiting for my two-star Berserker. Honestly, at this point, what I should do is, as soon as I saw the mages in first place, and I know that I'm going to go beast, I'm going to go two beast, six warrior, two marine, then I should sell the poison worms, get my siren in the game, um, get my Berserker in the game, and yeah, start hoping we hit our Tusker. That, that's basically what should happen. Also, I did miss one Tusker, so um, at some point I remember I saw one in the shop, so we didn't grab that. So, let's see, how long will this go? Wow, I really love this Venomancer. Nice, we hit our Pirate Captain. I'm not sure why I like this Venomancer so much. Um, something, I mean, this gives us, this gives us a really good discussion point. Because this is a mistake I see a lot of players make, is committing to a hero that is not in your long-term plans, especially expensive heroes, okay? So if, if we, when we all have time to sit here, pause YouTube and think about it, right? Or when I can just watch the game and just see what's happening. If I think about it, ask yourself this, at what point will I use this hero, right? Like, will will I use this in late game and what level do I need to be, okay? Because if I'm going for my, my typical six warrior builds, none of them have, none of them have a Venomancer until at best level nine, right? And even at level nine, the only reason I would introduce it is for like the Warlock synergy if I go for Beast. But see, now I'm not even going for Beast. So now I finally decided, okay, we're going six warriors with the marine synergy as we hit eight. Okay, and I finally do the right thing. So, so that I'm happy to see. But if you notice, so when I hit level eight, if you notice, I, I went for this, this synergy, right? Which is the six warriors and the two marine. So I went for that. So if I would have thought about that five rounds ago, seven rounds ago, right? then it would have been a lot easier for me to sell the Venomancer and just get it out of my team. And here's the thing, when I was win streaking, I'm okay that I'm holding onto a Venomancer. I'm okay that I'm holding onto a Poison Worm I'm probably not gonna use because I'm win streaking. But I wasn't win streaking, right? I've been almost lose streaking at that point, or I think I was on a lose streak at that point. So it was just holding onto things that were just costing me economy, to be honest. 
Okay, so from this point, we have some interesting choices. If I leveled a nine, and it looks like that's what I'm doing, then I'm less likely to get my three-star Tusker because my, my probability of getting one cost becomes very low, but I am going to have a much better chance of getting my Berserker, um, and also then I can add in the other stuff, right? We can add in some legendaries to help us out with whatever else is going on. So that becomes another thing. <clears throat> and the legendaries you could be adding in here, I could be grabbing a Doom, which I don't have. I could also get lucky and get a Rogue Guard. Um, so adding in some sort of Demon Warrior would be really nice for my team composition. Um, Doom would really help me with a Mage too for the Silence, if we can get it off. Um, so it looks like that's the route I'm going. And round 26 is when people will generally hit level 9. So that is probably what the mage player is going to target, because if you notice, they're still in first, um, or I believe that's the mage player, is still in first, has 50 gold, so I'm sure they're leveling to hit, um, to get to level 9. So I think what I'm deciding is let's just keep up in heroes. And the mage, okay, so now there's two mage teams, and they're in first and second place, and yeah, they're both almost guaranteed going to level 9. So um, yeah. There, there is the importance of understanding, when, when you run a team composition, understand when you should go direction A and when you should go direction B. So A and B for six warriors is four beast versus two marine, or the same thing goes for feather. I have people all the time ask me, like, what is better? Three assassins with six feather or three hunters with six feather? And the answer is that neither one is better. It just depends what the enemies are doing. That That's the best answer. Okay, so we got that on the board. We're going, so so we have a three-star Tusker we can try to aim for. We have a three-star uh, Swordsman we could try to aim for. And then we also want to get our uh, Berserker to level two. So let's see how it will go. And let's see, did they, so actually only one of the mages went to level nine. But you can see they even did it while keeping a strong economy. So the person in second place is in a good spot because, yeah, they still have a, they're like me. They're at level nine and they still have a very healthy economy. Whereas third place, they got to level nine with us, but their economy is shot. So those are some other things to keep an eye on. And first place actually didn't level and has a nice economy, but you can see they're going to, they're going to start losing because of that. <clears throat> So there we go. Um, at this point, I could grab a Soul Reaper because if I do hit a Ghost Prophet, then I can get the um, I can get the Warlock Agaris synergy back into my comp. So so that could be an option on the table. Because you have to keep in mind, one of my spots is open in there. Nice, we hit a Doom. And same thing. <clears throat> okay, so some history. It used to be before before beasts before the beast synergy got buffed there used to be a six warrior comp that was much more common than four beast and that that comp was what i'm using today so this is where um team compositions recycle over time as the meta shifts as uh things get buffed and nerfed so the reason storm shaman and siren used to go into six warrior teams so much is because mages were very strong okay so if you're a six warrior player and you want to deal with mages, you have to ask yourself, how am I going to do it, right? So Siren, I think it's obvious how the Siren helps. One, it gives you marine synergy. Two, it gives you CC if you have the mana regeneration items on it. Okay, so how's the Storm Shaman help you? The Storm Shaman helps you because it silences all the mages so they get their ultimates off slower and then your warriors can kill enough of them that they don't all die from the uh, mage's burst damage, okay? <clears throat> Another reason this comp used to be even better than the four beast is because Feather is another, it's another team comp that Six Warrior struggles with because of the avoidance, but what do Feather not avoid? They don't avoid magic damage. So the Storm Shaman's ultimate is really nice against Feather comps. And then if you get to level, right, if you can get that level 9 with your warriors, you can also introduce, like, a Dark Spirit. And then a Dark Spirit plus a Storm Shaman do really, really, really well against uh, teams that group up. So, anyways, that is why I'm grabbing the Storm Shaman for anybody, like, why the hell would you grab this? Ooh, nice. Rogue Guard. So, definitely grab the Rogue Guard. Hopefully, please. 
please take out a Tusker or sell the War Chief. Honestly, sell the War Chief. He's you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Oh, nice. And, and we get the item off of it. Um, by the way, actually, I'm glad this happened because I have started to do this. This is kind of theory crafting on my part. Was if you get, I'm super, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Because I got the mana item, so that works out perfectly for me to put the Storm Shaman. <clears throat> I was, I was wondering because I have the others. Swordsman was something I was thinking of taking to three star. That's why. But oh, by the way, look, you can see ev how everything played out. Notice the Storm Shaman, Siren alts. It's just right. Um, Normally, this feather player would would be an issue for me, right? Or it would be harder than it's uh, ending up at this point. So just the Storm Shaman Medusa definitely help. And you'll see against the mages, this makes a major, major difference. And yeah, see, like, even actually, even with them, I'm still having an issue. And it looks like this feather player is going to beat me. The avoidance just makes it really, really hard on six warrior teams. So, yeah. But this game has two mages, so hopefully they'll deal with a feather. And okay, well, here's my other misplay. I think I don't realize that I sold my. Um... Okay, so there's two misplays. One, I'm still going for Doom, but I already have my Rogue Guard. Um, and two, I'm getting another two star Swordsman when I just sold my last one. So I think I'm just getting a little confused in my comp and thinking about different things. So. <laughs> So anyways, here I would say is my next bigger mistake of the game. So DPS-wise, though, interestingly, um, the Rogard still performs really well, but he would perform better if I didn't have the Doom because then the, he would have the 50% true damage. <clears throat> Claw one, that's beautiful. That's going to help me so much against the Mage team. So definitely grab that. That I probably will actually put on my Siren, and I know that seems crazy, but it's because against Mage teams, if your Siren gets their alt off, um, it's very likely that your Warriors aren't going to die in the first place. So uh, that to me becomes, oh, Refresh Orb too, nice. So that's really good. So now with the Claw Wand, my Siren is guaranteed to get both ultimates off. Um, without that, the mages could burst your siren down because she is not all that uh, tanky, to be honest. <clears throat> so let's see. Oh, okay, perfect. So this is a mage team, so we can see this. The devastator goes, boom, and no, notice devastator alt also is does not affect me because of the claw one. So my siren just makes it through like nothing, and then look like just perma stun, uh, especially with the refresh orb. So that I think is the good way that works out. And bam, another stun, and there we go. Get out of here. Get out of here, you scum feather druid. So, yeah, I think that's it in this. Um, what I should be doing is targeting my Tusker, try to get him to three star, and same thing with my Abyssal Guard. Um, other than that, I could... We could think about going to level 10, honestly. This is one of the games where it might actually make sense. Just because my upgrades are really getting three stars. I mean, that's essentially what I would be going for. So, um, yeah. And here, oh, I remember this game now. Yeah, I definitely d forgot slash didn't realize that I sold my two-star swordsman. I, for some reason, I thought I, I still had it on the board. So I thought I was almost getting a three-star swordsman. <laughs> so I, I remember this now and being like, oh God, I wasn't tracking my team comp good enough. But anyways, um, another interesting thing to look at is the Rogue Guard and Doom, how they do damage-wise, since I I do have, I'm, they're not getting the Demon Synergy, but as you can see, the Rogue Guard is wrecking, and so is Doom, right? They're, at the, they're, they're topping my DPS list, so I guess it was a good call, in fact, to put both of them in there. Um, they, they are more damaged than I think having the Swordsman in instead of one of them would be, so that's good. But Swordsman can be really good against... Um, mage teams, by the way. Especially if you got a three-star swordsman with a mana item, it wrecks. Um, it absolutely wrecks mages. Because when swordsman ultimates, he does not take dam magic damage. He does, okay? So as soon as he's doing his whirlwind, whatever it's called in this game, right, spinning around, swordsman does not take magic damage. So if you put a mana crystal on him against mage teams, he, by the time they ultimate, He's already ultimated, and then he takes no damage from them. So Swordsman can absolutely destroy. Uh, Swordsman also is really nice against Six Feather, 
because he does magic damage, so he hits them. And here you go. This is the corner we're talking about. This this is like the combo I'm talking about where the the full on effect can help you against these six feather players. It's just like you lock them in a corner, you you throw a huge magic damage AoE on them with some cleave with your rogue guard, and you know, you just you laugh away. Oh yes, nice. Now I probably would aim for ten to be honest. And yeah, we're just stacking, just getting all the items in this game. Beautiful. Anybody who is at my stream, now you know why I got zero items today. So, you know, zero items. And then you, it, it, the game just, it goes on these hot streaks. It's like, I either have a game where I get every single item you could ever imagine, or I get nothing. So now I have a, a Orb of Refresh on my Medusa and my Storm Shaman has double Magicka Crystals. So I am a very happy squirrel in this game. Um, but anyways, this is our full-on comp. I can get the Dark Spirit in, I can get the three stars. Those are my upgrades, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, the Dark Spirit is definitely gonna be important against this um, Goblin player. So, and but actually the Goblin player just lost, nice. So in this game, this is where it's one of those your enemies kill each other type of thing. So now we're left with a Glacier Knight, and the Glacier Knight should not be an issue for this team. So once again, um, Six Warriors performs well against Glacier Knight. So people are asking me for counter videos all the time, but like we talk, I feel, I personally feel like we, I talk about counters every single video. Um, I try to be very explicit about what counters what for whatever I'm playing. So in this game, um, you can see... We're both level 9, he has multiple 2 stars, or he has multiple 3 stars, and I still perform well against him. So, like, 6 Warriors does well against Glacier Knights. That's, that's, it is a counter, I'll, I'll say that. 6 Warriors is a counter to Glacier Knights. Oop, oh, the phone is dying. Bam, okay, we get our 3 star, that's obviously going to help out. Um, and yep, nice, items, items, items. Abyssal Guard, by the way... A three-star Abyssal Guard, do not sleep on it. Like, they are so strong, especially if you can get some items. Like, I got an Axe of Fury on my Abyssal Guard the other day, and I, like, it was it was literally one-shotting things. If it puts its alt onto something and hits it, they it can literally just one-shot uh, squishy units, which is insane. But anyways, here it goes. Our full-on combo. Stone. Silence. Stone again. Oh, yeah. So beautiful. Get wrecked. Get wrecked. Man, this is, this is one of those games that I'm telling you, like, this goes in my auto chest uh, spank bank, not gonna lie, you know, it's like, when you're laying in bed, just falling asleep, you're just thinking of that game, that, that's this game for you all. That's why I had to share it, I ju just had to share it. Um, and I also wanted to share it because I, I feel like people are sleeping on Six Warriors now, and I never thought it would be me who's like, hey everybody, Show some love to six warriors, but hey, what can I say? You know, that, that's the way the meta's gone. So I could put in the Dark Spirit, but the fact that we're beating the Glacier Knight anyways, I'll just add in some more Frontline to just smash, smash it up. Because I don't have the Mana Crystals for the Dark Spirit, and if I front him against three-star, like, Hell Knights and stuff like that, I mean, he's probably going to die before he ultimates. So, anyways... And stomp on through. The combo is beautiful. So anyways, I, I call this the old warrior, the old six warriors, but I don't know. We can all come up with a name. So there's beast warriors and then there's this, which I don't know. Fishy warriors, marine warriors. I don't know. In the comments, you all can let me know what we should call this. But this is the old version of six warriors and it's a beautiful comp. It is very useful. In the meta, as mages come back, which they're going to because especially, remember, they're introducing a new hero soon that's a dragon and a mage. So guess what? That's going to help. Dragon mages. There's going to be dragon mages everywhere. So um, this is a composition I want to show you all early and tell you that if you want to play your six warriors in the future when all these mages are back in the meta, um, this is how you are going to want to do it. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. As always, take care, have a great day, happy ranking, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.